Hey, and welcome to Fit Me to Rock Fitness Podcast, a podcast for people who want to get no BS information about fitness and know that fitness is about so much more than losing scale weight. It's about feeling confident in your skin and empowered in your life. I'm your host, Tura Virta, personal trainer, strength and nutrition coach, and most of all, a husband of my beautiful wife, Miriam. Each week, my guests and me will give you some no BS fitness tips and motivate you to take action in your own personal fitness journey as we talk about nutrition, exercise, mindset, personal development, and executing in life with enjoyable but still effective strategies. If your goal is to look better, feel, and be strong, and experience transformation from inside out, you, my friend, are in the right place. Thank you for jumping in, and now let's jump into today's episode. Hey, and welcome to this Fit Me Tour of Fitness podcast. In today's episode, I'm talking about the simple swaps and uh, how to make swaps easiest, easy as possible for busy lifestyle. And uh, this is a topic uh, I talked uh, earlier this week with the two women in their 50s, 60s, and uh, they both were struggling with exactly the same issue. And I thought that this might be a helpful uh, helpful topic uh, for so many. So uh, first, uh, about a quick uh, story about those uh, women. And uh, they both uh, both had a similar background that they were kind of, uh, they didn't want to go for another diet. And uh, and uh, when we talked, uh, like what options they had, because uh, uh, they both have been so, so-called so uh, yo-yo dieters, as uh, they always uh, went for another diet, then lost weight and then step by step slowly gained everything back back what they lost and uh, and this is uh, this is a kind of very common struggle and that the most common reason is that then every time you go for a diet it's it's getting harder every time because you you are trying to lose weight you know that it's uh, it's possible but then at some point more those cycles you repeat uh, harder it gets every time and uh, and uh, it always they have been that kind of mindset that uh, it, you have to go on diet, you have to be very strict, you have to uh, be very like uh, following those actions. And if you don't follow, you are not going to gain results. And uh, and that caused that they were like uh, at the point that uh, it was not anymore worth of it, or it, it felt even to get started like uh, it's too hard. And uh, and uh, if you think like that, this is this is exactly the reason why you should not go for a diet because it's it soon be easy. And then when we talked, like uh, I shared a couple ideas, like that. What if you would just get started and uh, not aiming to do everything what you think you should be knowing, and kind of trying to do the simplest uh, steps or or adding things instead of taking things away because dieting mindset is often just taking things away that you are eating too much or. You, you can't eat sugars you can't eat uh you can't drink alcohol or whatever and uh, and uh, uh that is that is very common uh, struggle and uh it's it's same for me like uh, when i think like what i have done uh, for my personal journey what was the biggest trap uh, i'm a person who loves to eat a lot earlier in the day and uh uh, it was a time like um, it's now I think six seven years ago when I swap my breakfast. I'm simple guy. I love to have similar type of breakfast every single day. And uh, earlier I had just a couple of breads and uh, and uh, with the cheese and chicken, uh, some kind of ham. And now I'm basically having my uh, break breakfast smoothie every single day. And it's what I'm varying is I eat just the fruits. Uh, Greek yogurt, and now I'm adding even a protein powder, na- natural po- protein powder, into my smoothie to add even a little bit more protein. And uh, that those are the kind of uh, why why it makes them so big difference. Like if I in the time when I did this swap, I didn't know why uh, I suddenly started to feel so much better. But now more research, more I'm into that uh, fitness stuff, more I have learned. And there is actually scientific reason why that is happening. Because uh, even that there is nothing wrong eating bread or something, but there is so many macro micronutrients what were missing. And what I what I get now instead of when I'm eating just fruits and uh, some uh, kind of uh, protein source, 
it has changed everything. My energy levels, they are so much better. I'm feeling fuller for longer. I'm not starving anymore, or I'm not that hungry going into a breakfast, and I don't get those like uh, uh, energy level uh, that they are going up and then suddenly down, and uh, and I'm, now I'm staying full uh, all, almost all uh, uh, morning. And uh, earlier that was not the case. And uh, why that makes them so big difference? The difference is that now I have so much more fiber uh, to uh, fruits what I'm eating, and I make sure that I have enough protein. So protein, it's the simplest. It's I'm sure you have no you have heard about it. What, how it makes difference, and and there are so many studies showing that earlier in the day it's slightly better than doing it later on today. I'm not saying that you can do it. It's for sure possible. It's it's uh, about personal preferences but for many many people it's just the just the thing that if you eat breakfast and adding there some protein goes for many people breakfast is maybe they think that they have protein but when when you eat one egg or two eggs that is not going to be enough for as a protein source for your breakfast so because uh, if you think that um, you should aim for 1.5 uh, Kilo uh, grams per kilogram of your body weight or whole body weight, depending how much weight you have. But that is kind of bare minimum what you should be aiming for. And let's say that you make uh, 70 kilos, you should get at least 100 grams. And if your breakfast is, uh, you have, you think that you are having some protein, you have one egg, that's a seven gram of protein. And uh, you don't have to wonder why you are struggling with hitting your protein goal if your breakfast. Uh, has only seven grams of protein so that's why uh, adding some kind of uh, protein sources for your breakfast it's uh, so helpful so but this episode is not about what i'm doing and it's it's all about like what you could be doing and kind of simple swaps different ways of thinking or or how to prepare better to make smarter choices later and uh, without uh, having without cooking every single meal or or when you don't have too much time so this is this is a, a topic and what we are going to go uh, deeper so first uh, understanding your nutri nutritional needs like what your body needs you of course you have your favorite foods what you enjoy eating but then there is some what your body actually needs to be able to function at best and uh, there is it's called like kind of balanced diet and it it's combination like from i i know i'm sure many people like it depends where you are living but for most people the problem is that you are eating too many carbohydrates there is nothing wrong with carbohydrates i don't say that they are bad of course because they are not they are essential you need them but if you on the other hand if you have uh, too many fats and too less protein that makes things so much harder so balanced diet like it depends on your uh, body composition goals but for most people like uh, uh you like i said the protein goal is the most important like it it, it then it depends like what is your if your goal is to build muscle if your goal is to build fat but in both cases protein intake should always be the same there is no difference like for many many especially women think that uh, you know i can i have to be careful with the protein because uh, I don't want to get too bulky or build too much muscle. And uh, but it's it's the most essential macronutrient when it comes to fat loss because uh, like in these uh, examples I told you earlier, those women when you are not aware of your protein intake, when you get over 30, 35, we start to lose uh, muscle mass naturally, and uh, especially when you go on diet. Uh, so it means totally that. Uh, your body uh, is you are giving less energy to your body than it requires and your body need to compensate that missing energy from some tissue and that tissue is going to be of course you would like that it's only fat but uh, there is also muscle and uh, your body doesn't care you of course you like i said you want to have it that it's everything going away from fat but your body doesn't care and that is the what is the difference between fat loss and weight loss because weight loss, it it doesn't tell if you have lost your uh, weight from your fat or your from your muscles. Usually, it's combination of those both. But fat loss is that you are trying to maximize that uh, 
uh, fat loss, that you are losing as much uh, fat as possible, and minimize that muscle loss, what is uh, almost always happening. But uh, uh, how you are going to prevent it is with uh, eating enough protein. And in addition, if you are able to do even one, two strength uh, training sessions, so lifting weights, uh, doing bodyweight exercises, some kind of resistance training. So those, when you combine those things, you are maximizing your uh, fat loss rate and minimizing muscle loss. Because uh, uh, like in these cases, like what often happens in uh, in that yo-yo dieting cycle is that you are you are going on a diet, you just eat less, you don't care what you are eating, if it's going to be, if you are going to eat more protein or or carbohydrates or or whatever. And then, you know, it's just less and easiest source for your body to compensate this energy is from your muscle. And if you don't pay attention, you don't care, you don't do st uh, strength training, you are losing too much muscle mass. And how that is impacting uh, in long term, more these cycles you do, harder it gets and more muscle mass you are, lo you are losing. And that affects again to your uh, metabolism, how much energy your body needs when you are resting. So imagine if you are on, uh, you are having some uh, diets and then your metabolism now at the moment, your body needs maybe, or it should need 1,500 calories just to maintain your weight. And then you have done these yo-yo dieting cycles. You might have that it's it, your body needs only thousand two hundred, so it's three hundred calories less. And that is how it's happening often with these kind of yo-yo dieting cycles that uh, that uh, years are passing. And then you know the same things what you used to do earlier don't work anymore. And this is uh, often, especially for women, older women. Like of course, there is a there it's there is an impact for your hormones, menopause, those kind of things. Uh, your sleep, uh, they are. I'm not saying that they don't impact, but it's not only them. It's just uh, for many people. I have a feeling that uh, it's just the easy excuse that it is how it is uh, at this age. It's just a normal thing. Of course, it matters too. But there is so much you can do to prevent it and to avoid it. That it's not. It don't have to be this way, and this is just kind of a belief. What you have to know that it's it's there is a reason why this is happening. It's not only your menopause or certain age when everything is getting harder. If you are still doing strength training, if you are paying attention to your protein intake, and it still happens, there is still there is still uh, then I'm saying that okay, then there might be something else. But making sure that first that you are uh, having enough protein doing some kind of resistance training and then maybe not trying to cut your calories too much in the beginning those are kind of the biggest three mistakes what i see people are doing so what are then uh how you how you how you know that or what your diet should be like uh, in in people i usually see that there is uh, some very typical nutritional defi de deficiencies like uh iron, vitamin D or fiber and how they can impact to your health. So how you are actually uh, knowing if you have like, for example, iron defi deficiency. So there is some kind of symptoms. So symptoms for iron deficiency is uh, fatigue and weakness. So because iron is crucial for producing hemoglobin, which helps uh, carry oxygen in the blood. And low iron levels result in less oxygen reaching the tissues, causing persistent fatigue. And uh, then you might uh, recognize it from uh, pale skin, uh, brittle nails. So it can cause, uh, if you have that iron deficiency, it can cause the skin and nails to lose their color and become more fraggy. So and then uh, other uh, symptoms is uh, shortness of breath. So if you recognize that you are uh, suddenly uh, you are experiencing shortness of breath during normal activities and uh, because that is that is uh, one uh, kind of symptoms and then if you understand if you are having like kind of poor concentration and you are less productive than normally so these these are all caused by uh, iron deficiency so so uh, it it can lead then to anemia and uh, and uh, that is affecting then uh, uh, met metabolic health and immune function increasing uh, those all kind of infections and if you are more often uh, sick 
than you used to be. This is also a sign of iron deficiency. Then vitamin D is that if you are having some bone and back pain, so because the vitamin D is essential for calcium absorption in the bones and deficiency can lead to uh, softening of the bones uh, in adults and causing them some pain and discomfort. Uh, other symptom is uh, depression and mood swings. So there is an evidence linking low levels of vitamin D to an increased risk of uh, depression and uh, muscle weakness. So vitamin D is important for muscle function and deficiency can contribute to physical weakness impacting daily activities and exercises. So those are uh, kind of symptoms, how you know, because this is, uh, of course, you can make some blood test if you have some deficiency. And if you are having these kind of symptoms, I highly encourage you to do blood work and see if that is the case. Uh, and how is the fiber? Fiber uh, symptoms that you might have um, uh, if you are not having enough fiber. So you might have digestive problems. So if you are lacking fiber, it can lead to constipation. So you are not able to go to the toilet and that can cause uh, discomfort and bloating. And uh, you, you, you might have irregular bowel movements. So Fiber helps to regulate bowel movements, and without it, uh, it's too, uh, it can uh, those uh, stools can become hard and difficult to pass. And also, you are have you are going to feel more hungry. So it's uh, fiber is with protein. It contributes feeling of fullness. And so, without enough fiber, you while you are going to be hungrier more often. And uh, of course, those are those can lead then to overeating. And uh, if you overeat, then you know you are gaining uh, weight, right? So those fiber, protein, they are the most important for uh, feeling fullness. So that's why, like I said, example what I had those uh, when I added protein and fiber, they are they are uh, they those were the key adjustments what I did, key steps what I did for my breakfast to avoid that uh, kind of uh, overeating and uh, having like kind of those hunger attacks. And uh, of course, fiber plays a big role in a cholesterol management and regulating blood sugar levels. So deficiency can increase the risk of heart disease and type 2 diabetes. So this is often what I, uh, like in my family, uh, almost everyone has a uh, high cholesterol. And uh, they are like that. Okay, it's uh, it's uh, it's in uh, your genes that there is not much what you can do. But uh, when I found out that uh, that uh, this is uh, this is uh, this have changed so much, and uh, now when I'm uh, when I'm having fiber, like how to get that fiber? It's for me. It's uh, two three pieces of fruit every single day. Plus, obviously, I try to get uh, look that I I have uh, enough vegetables. Uh, I'm I'm trying to choose. It's not that you have to, but I try to choose like kind of whole grain uh, products over over uh, um, just some white uh, stuff. So so whole grain products they have some fiber. So those are kind of steps what I have done, and uh, these these are just uh, examples how you can do it. And if you if you feel any of those uh, kind of um, deficiencies or those symptoms what i mentioned uh, make uh, i would highly recommend you to make a blood work and to test so those deficiencies so that because those are very very common for especially for busy people if you are not uh, eating enough uh, fruits uh, getting vitamin d and uh, and uh, iron so those what are then uh, other like kind of easy swaps for better health, like breakfast, I already talked about. Like uh, it's just uh, basically thinking, thinking that if you would have some kind of fruit or berries, and uh, those uh, those you can you can you don't need to have a um, yogurt if you don't like it. It could be oatmeal, uh, but just kind of trying to avoid those uh, sugary cereals 
or something. So it could be then like for me, it was Greek yogurt. You could add some honey instead of uh, instead of uh, and what I what I always love to use is that uh, you choose kind of natural yogurts without any added taste or it without any flavored yogurts and uh, and making sure that yogurt what you have is that is some high protein yogurt like for example Greek yogurt or skur which have a lot more protein than normal and if you are not sure uh, what about what, what is your brand just look at your nutritional value so Greek yogurt usually and skur they have uh, 10 grams of protein uh, in 100 grams at least here in Italy and uh, uh, if you look uh, normal regular flavored or natural yogurt without they have maybe three four grams so you can triple at least double your protein intake simply swapping your yogurt for a uh, greek yogurt or skur with uh, or some other high protein yogurt so those kind of swaps that you are basically not changing anything you are still eating same stuff like you are used to but just a different brand so uh, those are easiest swaps then uh, for lunch if you think that uh, uh, just that uh, choosing uh for example whole grain wraps or or with lean meats or chickpeas instead of um, fast food options so if you are for example if you are um we are going a uh, little bit later more on details but if you are preparing everything wraps are <laughs> those are my favorite thing to eat when i don't have a lot of time if you are just if i'm just prepared with some lean meat uh, or chickpeas uh sauce for wraps it's just uh, put it in Heat it and that's it. You are good to go. Uh, also, also with the salads, like that, what makes huge difference. Uh, my my family were just here, and it's just a difference in Finland and Italy is that uh, what in Italy we use with the salads, it's just uh, basically uh, olive oil, a little bit salt or pepper, and uh, that's it. Uh, and in Finland, it's some kind of creamy dressing with the salad and uh, you will add so much more like kind of uh, calories uh, fats and uh, if you are able to do those uh, swaps like just the little things of course it takes some kind of a little bit getting used to it but then you actually taste that salad and at least for me I I used to I never thought that I could eat the salad with just some uh, olive oil and uh, salt or pepper but now I could not I I I I just can't eat it. It's just you are getting used to it. It's it's kind of same things. Uh, if you think like a coffee, that was one swap what I did. I used to drink it always with the with the sugar. And I'm not saying that it's it's a bad thing or you can't do it, but just uh, now uh, that's over 20 years ago when I did that swap. And now when I count how much less sugar I eat, if I have uh, two three coffees per day. And uh, I put just one uh, teaspoon of sugar. That's like five grams each. Then, then that's like a ten, fifteen grams per day. And if you think it, at how many, how much is that in a one year? So year has uh, three hundred sixty-five days. And if that, if I drink my coffee every single day, and if it's even if it's uh, just uh, two teaspoons per day, that's three and a half, three point uh, six kilograms per year and now in 20 years you can count it's like a 70 kilos and if it's if i have a three coffees that's uh like a hundred kilos pure sugar less what i have put into my body so in it might think that what it doesn't make any difference but in the long term that's a huge impact and of course it's not only sugar there is a lot of calories what you save so uh it it might sound that it doesn't make big difference but all these amounts like if you count how many calories has uh uh four kilos of uh sugar and that is that is a huge amount so those all kind of small changes what feels like that they are not even that big changes they are all what actually matters uh then same thing with the uh with the snacks so if you think that you want to have something kind of sweet uh instead of having some candy bars like uh, and i'm counting some of uh protein bars are candy bars they are just marketed there is some protein uh, okay they might have a protein but just make sure look those labels how much protein they actually has how many calories and then uh, make decision how it feels and uh, of course there is a there is a i'm i used to eat basically every single day one two protein bars 
But now, recently, I haven't been eating them. And I, I must say that I feel so much better. And my clients have been uh, kind of feeling the same. It depends, of course, from the brand, what kind of protein they are using. Uh, but uh, many of my clients, they have been struggling with bloating and not feeling well e while eating some uh, uh, protein bars. So protein bars, uh, even they are they are good swaps. They are for sure better than uh, some uh, chocolate. But if you feel if it feels in your stomach or in your gut or you are not digesting it well, it might be a reason. There is a, a just because uh, just. So make sure it's it's a very common thing, but and instead if you have uh, your snack and you have uh, fresh fruits uh, or dried fruits, of course they are like easy to overconsume. If you, if everything what is dried, if you imagine like uh, having some wine grapes, if they are fresh, uh, there is a lot of water, and if you take some uh, rushings or something when they are dried, uh, it's a lot more likely that you are eating so much more. At least I'm I'm a person who who loves to eat a lot, and uh, when you are swapping those things uh, uh, instead of uh, dried, eating some fresh stuff, that makes such a big difference. Uh, for uh, then for dinner and uh, thinking like that, what kind of uh, if you think of course you should have some kind of protein source, and uh, if you have like a grilled fish or chicken instead of uh, processed or fried meats. Those are like simplest steps what you could be doing, and uh, and uh, then like if you have like some steamed or roasted uh, vegetables with herbs instead of uh, mashed potatoes with cream, so those all kind of things they make. Uh, if you just like I, like I said always to everyone who is starting with me, uh, um, before making any changes, try to track, try to write down. Even you are not using some tracking app or. Uh, uh, just writing it down, what you are actually eating. It makes you so much more aware what you are currently eating. And then it's so much easier when you see, like uh, at, at least for me and so many for my clients, that uh, it's so eye-opening when you are seeing that then you understand that, okay, wow, I'm eating that much. I didn't know. I, I thought that this is healthy, but it has so many calories. And uh, then when you learn from your current nutrition, it's so much easier. You automatically start to make better decisions or thing like, do I really need it? And then uh, it's not, it don't have to be for rest of the rest of your life, but in, even for a couple of days, like even for one week or three days, that's more, more likely it's going to be enough to see you that what you are actually currently doing. Then other things uh, like uh, how you are, how you can save time and boost your nutrition. So, Think about, think like this is something like that. I don't like to plan, like make plans for a whole week what I'm going to eat. Of course, if you are able to do it, that's uh, going to be a massive, make massive difference. But uh, what I what I love to do is that taking, I don't know, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, even it's it would mean that you are doing one workout less. It would like, let's say that you are planning to work out three times a week. Uh, I would say that you get, especially if your goal is to fat, to lose fat, you are getting more benefits that you are working out two times a week. And then the third time, you take time to actually plan and prepare your meals. So what I love to do with this, I don't I don't like to plan everything that what I have to eat. Of course, it's if it's possible, if I'm able to do it, that helps a lot. But what I love to do is to, to prepare only my protein sources because that I know that I struggle the most because I'm not a big meat, meat eater. But if I'm able to prepare my protein sources so i know that okay this today or i'm having a chicken i can cook it at the same time i'm preparing my salads or or i know my protein sources and they are pre-cooked then with the chicken if i have uh, grilled my chicken uh i i can do it one day it can be with the uh, chicken pasta next day i can have a wrap with chicken so i i have the same i just put different seasoning and uh, and that's that's how you make it so much easier. So you know already when the time is that you you are more likely not having too much time, and then you are actually actually uh, when you you are already prepared. So you are going to be you know what you are going to eat, and then you don't have to turn into those uh, quick options or fast foods. What you know that they are probably not going to be the most uh, beneficial for your health. So. Also, kind of 
things like um I we are I love to use like we have a, it's called Bimpy here. It's kind of machine what is cooking itself. So uh, my wife absolutely loves it because it's it's kind of cooking itself. There's so many receipts you can you can search by the what you have, what ingredients we have at the home. So you don't need to go for uh buying groceries, but you just basically cook what you are already having or or you are looking what would you have and then you are preparing cooking it day before and then and uh, when uh, at the lunchtime when you come from work or something you can just basically heat it it don't need to be fresh or if you have time it takes like uh, 20 minutes and you can meanwhile you can do some other other things while that uh, machine is cooking so uh but if you have uh, other options what you might have is like kind of still still frying grilling or using slow cooker to make nutritious meals quickly so all these kind of things what you might be thinking like that how you how to make it there is technology is there so just start using if you are not already using it into your advantage then uh next uh, hack what i wanted to talk is about hydration and uh, it 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 matters it matters so much how much water it, it makes you um it helps to boost your metabolism a bit uh not too much but uh, it makes you feel fuller and uh that is essential. So you are making everything so much easier when you are drinking enough. And uh, for I, from my experience, most people are struggling, myself too, to eating enough or drinking enough water. So it's it's really habit what you are building. And uh, my favorite hack is just to have my water bottle always visible. So it's on my desk at this point. At the, at this moment, I have a water bottle in front of me, and I have it. My favorite hack is to have like a i have a, around it's six point uh, uh zero point six bottle so if you have a half liter bottle or bigger you can of course change it but i have a five rubber bands so my goal is to drink three liters of water every single day so five rubber bands so i know every time bottle is empty i took one rubber band away and uh, then i know that end of the day my goal is to have three uh, or all bottles or all pants away so i know that i have had those my uh, five bottles three liters of water and other good sign is just simply when you are going to toilet what color your urine is so if it's light colored it's you are doing okay if it's a dark color uh, you gotta drink more or if you don't go toilet at all you gotta drink more so those are those are kind of uh, easy hacks how to remember it and uh, because it's not it's not that hard you just have to remember it and more often like some people need some notification in their phone or alarms or something but just make sure that you are drinking enough water so then uh the uh last things uh, is just the, when you are going out so it's not about that you can't have what you don't want but thinking like that if you have uh, for example two options uh Try to look which options they have some kind of uh, protein source. First, that is the first step. If you have possible to have get like a, a dishes that are grilled, uh, baked, or streamed, and uh, ask, asking maybe if you can get uh, dressings or sauces on the side, because uh, often those sauces they are. What is the problem? There is no problem if you are you are having a grilled good meat or or fish. But uh, it's the problem is those sauces. So having them on site, not maybe using all of them, that they are not mixed, that is kind of a simple tip. And other tip is with the portion control. Like depending where you are, we are lucky here in Italy that in most places portion sizes are not that big, that they are uh, okay. But for example, in the States or somewhere, I know that those portions, they are huge. And uh, Good tip what one of my clients shared with me that they are always asking half portions so they are bringing only half portion and other half is already packing so that you are already you are not going to have whole portion you are not going to eat because once you have it on a plate it's less likely that you are like at least if you are like me that you don't want to waste food so you are going to finish everything and uh, like especially like my that's kind of my weakness still i really struggle to leave something behind but if you ask it for like already that before they bring it that it's half is already ready to go to, so you are not you don't need to touch it so 
this is this is just for portion size is such a great tip what i what i think that this is one of the best things what i have heard what you could be doing for if you know that you are going to eat out on a place where portion sizes are huge so because and not, don't do it after because that is that is like one of that my client was shared he said he has tried to do it like a, already earlier or doing it um, doing doing it in a different way that uh, you are you are uh, kind of that what you can't eat that you are then taking with you but in those cases you are always eating more than actually you should but if you have it already that decision is made already before that is that is uh, such a game changer so this was a quick episode for those um, kind of easiest traps and uh, I would love to hear from you like what do you think uh, about this episode about my podcast uh, if you have any content ideas feel free to shoot uh, shoot me an email turo at fitmeturo.com and uh, I'd love to hear from you what do you think about the episode what was your biggest takeaway you can DM me in my Instagram at personal trainer underline turo or uh, and uh, have a, let's have a chat and uh, of course, those uh, thank you for all those who have done uh, five star reviews. I'm not putting any commercial or any ads on this podcast, so it's only originally going organic or like uh, without any ads. And uh, I what the, what is the best thing is to sharing this episode. So if you could do me a great favor and leave five star review, share this episode with one of your friend or even in your Instagram story, and let me know what was your biggest takeaways. What was the most uh, beneficial tip what you heard and uh, those those are that is helping i'm i'm i don't need anything else uh thank you for listening and uh talk to you soon hold up friend do you love fit me to a fitness podcast if so the best way to say thank you is to subscribe to the podcast and leave a review on itunes I know every podcaster wants you to leave a review, but it's because those reviews help the podcast to reach more people. I truly want to know what you think and if this particle episode resonated with you, would you also please share it? Either send a link to someone who you think will find it valuable or take a screenshot and post it into your social media and tell your friends and family why they should listen it. Make sure you tag me so I can hear your feedback and give you a little love. And you know... If you aren't already following me on Instagram or TikTok, that's the perfect time to hit that follow button. Thank you for being here and listening to Fit Me to a Fitness Podcast.